Let's go back to 2009, when the gaming PC landscape saw a remarkable shift, with components traditionally reserved for the high-end market becoming more accessible to a broader audience. During this period, gamers could build systems that combined top-tier performance with relatively affordable pricing, striking a balance between cutting-edge technology and budget-conscious choices. These systems featured parts that, while technically part of the mid-range offerings, rivaled the capabilities of much more expensive counterparts, offering an unprecedented level of performance for the price. Let's see what that machine looks like and how it performs in our 2009 mid-range to high-end gaming PC. The Intel Core i7-860, released in September of 2009, was a key player in the mid to high-end processor market offering a solid combination of performance and value. With four physical cores and eight threads, the i7-860 featured a base clock of 2.8 GHz and utilized Intel's Linfield architecture, delivering strong multi-core performance for both gaming and multitasking. Paired with 8 MB of L3 cache, it provided ample power for demanding applications while remaining within the reach of budget-conscious builds. Despite its age, the i7-860 holds up well in modern gaming and productivity tasks. Recently, the Budget Builds official YouTube channel revisited this processor, so you can find out more about it and how it's holding up today there. To house our i7, we have the Asus P7P55LX motherboard. This LGA1156 board offered reliable performance and was a solid choice for both gaming and professional use. It featured support for DDR3 RAM, PCI Express 2.0 and USB 3.0, all while being quite affordable at less than 100 euros. While it didn't have all the bells and whistles of a higher-end boards, this board delivered great value with stable overclocking potential. For the graphics card, we've chosen the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 275 from Gigabyte. The GPU was designed for solid 1080p gaming, offering 896 MB of GDDR3 memory and great performance at a reasonable MSRP of 250 bucks. While not as powerful as the flagship GTX 285, also released in 2009, the GTX 275 provided excellent value, running most games of the time at high settings. This mid-range card is exactly half of the dual-headed GTX 295. It was an exceptionally good choice for gamers looking for good performance without spending top dollar, beating even GTX 260 in price to performance charts. For memory, we've got four of the Corsair XMS3 DDR3 2GB 1600MHz for a total of 8GB of system memory. At the time, 8GB of DDR3 RAM was more than enough for gaming and multitasking, and this kit offered fast 1600MHz speeds with low latency. Our storage solution is the Kingston SSD Now 80GB SSD. SSDs were just starting to gain traction in 2009, and this drive brought the benefits of faster boot times and quicker load speeds at a lower price point. Though small by today's standards, the 80GB SSD was perfect for housing your operating system and a few games. We'll supplement the rest of the storage by using a 500GB hard drive. Here is the complete list of relevant parts used in this build. We haven't captured the whole build segment, as it is no thrills, straightforward process. In the future, we'll only record if there's some interesting gimmick, a nice case, or something else in that vein. OS of choice is Windows 7, also newly released in 2009, finally to properly replace aging Windows XP, Vista doesn't count. It's time for a benchmark breakdown, and to avoid confusion, we'll call this machine 2009 mid-range. We'll compare it, where applicable, to the two of our 2008 high-end and two 2009 budget builds. We regrettably cannot compare it to the 2008 mid-range with GTX 260, as we changed our benchmarks quite a bit since then. We start a benchmark breakdown with Oblivion. Our newest machine provides performance akin to the 2008 high-end SLI variant, and a more stable one at that. It is a clear win for a much cheaper setup in this, at the moment, 3 years old demanding game. Both 2008 high-end and 2009 mid-range destroy 2009 budget builds, but the cheaper builds still give us playable performance. It is no surprise that our mid-range variant provides us with a better price-to-performance ratio. In Crisis, for the most part, our 2009 mid-range competes against the 2008 high-end SLI variant. That is, until the very high preset, where SLI gets to shine brightly. 
There, it is comparable and a bit better than a single GTX 280 build. SLI provides quite a boost in Mafia 2, so the 2008 high-end SLI variant dominates here. Midrange is more comparable to the single GTX 280 variant, with a bit better performance. Skyrim has an FPS limit of 60, so we only see the difference at the Ultra preset. 2008 midrange provides us with similar performance to a single GTX 280 variant. In a 2013 Tomb Raider, you are not able to select Ultra or Ultimate presets with the GTX 200 series. So we have a similar performance breakdown to the previous games. But from a certain viewpoint, the 2009 budget build with the HD 5750 provides us with the best performance. This game is more than playable on our newest machine, up to the last selectable high preset. In Wolfenstein New Order, we get playable performance up to 1080p high preset. Five years later, this PC is still rocking hard. That is, until games start to require DirectX 11 features, as 2015 Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt does here. Here are the results for the static benchmarks that we ran. Components like the Intel Core i7-860 and NVIDIA GTX 275 delivered an amazing performance at a reasonable price, sometimes beating even HEDT and SLI build like our 2008 high-end. It was simple to build, maintain and keep cool, while you could play any game until 2015. It was fun to build and fun to test. Hopefully you had some fun as well. See you around!